morning to everyone and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Let us all stand as we begin our morning worship service as we sing the song, He Brought Me Out. This is our song as believers, that we have a Savior who has brought us out from the power of sin. Let us sing the song, He Brought Me Out, all together on the first verse. My heart was distressed in Jehovah's red crown, and lo, in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep, my clay, who tenderly brought me out to golden day. He brought me out of the fiery clay, he set my feet on the again for giving us the opportunity to worship you again and to gather us again here in the church. Uh, we ask you, Lord, to please guide us and give us more blessings uh, uh, for this day, for this morning, also at this afternoon. Also, uh, please open our hearts and mind as we listen to the choir and also to your message. And also bless us and also uh, those members who are preparing going here in the church. Please guide them. And also, Lord, our pastors and also our speaker for this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to the choir. Thank you. 
Let us all stand as we continue our worship to our music and our singing. Indeed, Christ is our solid rock. as we have our announcements. Well, good morning. Welcome to Baptist Bible Church. How are you doing today? Fine? Amen. It's good to see you. It's, joy it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Well, it's the last Sunday for the month. Amen? And the Lord has been so good. Let's count our blessings. We just had the new year. We had our candlelight service. We had our 72nd anniversary. And we are always having our pastor every Sunday. Amen? Amen. So God has been so good. It's time. It's really good to praise Him and to worship Him together as, as a church. Okay, how are you doing? Are you in a battle right now? Are you in a battle right now? Are you facing a battle or are you in a battle right now? Then trust and serve the Lord. That is our team that we are studying in our Sunday school. That is why we would like to encourage you to be here at 9 o'clock. We are studying the book of Judges. And uh, it's amazing how God delivers His people every time from their enemies. They just continue to serve and trust Him, okay? So we would like to invite you to be here at 9 o'clock for our combined Sunday school class, okay? Uh, also, don't forget our uh, prayer meeting every Wednesday. We do, uh, we do believe in prayer. Our church has been prayed so many things for so many things and God has answered them. We have a list of all our uh, brethren who are sick and those who are in our prayer list. You can get one after uh, our service at the back or you can download it in our, um, in our Facebook account, in our messenger, in our uh, um, online uh, church um, website. And then we can also pray for that. We need some, we believe in prayer. Actually, we, we prayed for our dear pastor. He's, God has answered them. He's always with us. We also prayed for Pastor James Montenegro. And to give you an update on his condition, we praise the Lord that uh, he's doing fine. Uh, the, last, um, the last update that I received last Friday, he's still in intub intubated, but he can uh, already talk. And the doctor is giving him medicine. Let's continue to pray for him and his family. And also, we are continuing to pray for Pastor Mike uh, 
Tanyala and his family as he undergoes treatment. Let's continue to pray for him and also for everyone. And um, we believe in, in God answers our prayers, okay? So if you're looking for an opportunity to serve the Lord, we have some uh, uh, areas that we need some volunteers. If you'd like to, uh, to, to use your talents uh, to be able to teach Sunday school class online, then you can also uh, approach Brother William, Sister Grace, Brother Irvin, or if you'd like to open a Bible uh, class, online Bible class in your home or in your office, you can also approach them. Uh, Brother Jay uh, and uh, also Brother Irvin, they're, they're the ones in charge there. Okay, so let's do our best to be able to serve the Lord and use the most of all the te technology right now so we can be able to reach more people for the Lord. Don't forget our uh, regular tithes and offering. The tithes that we give to the Lord is the one that we use to be able to pay for our electric bills, our utilities, so that our online services will be okay. Ah, para yung mga ano, hindi sila nagklaklag. Okay, pagkakulang ang bayad, nasisira yung internet. Eh. Pero pagka okay, okay. So that's why we have good internet because we pay on time. Then that's where our tithes are going. Okay, and also our faith promise giving. We are now on our week 9. Week 9 of our faith promise giving, our goal of 70,000 per week so that we can be able to support our missionaries. Our missionary for this week is from the the country of Nepal, let's continue to pray for uh, missionary Hilton Soloriano, okay? And also for our missionaries that we are also supporting here in the Philippines and also in foreign field, okay? So that's all for our announcements. Do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? If this is your first time to be at Baptist Bible Church. Can you please raise up your right hand so that we can recognize you? Meron po ba? Meron po ba? Welcome to the friendliest church in Manila. Amen. It's nice to see all of you. Let's all stand up and let's sing our welcome song, Brother Irvin. Let's all stand as we sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Kawayan niyo po yan, mga kapatid niyo po yan sa Panginoon. Kahit kayo nakikilala, kawayan niyo po, batiin niyo po, and let's welcome each other as we have gathered together in this church. As we sing, Ligayan ng Buhay. Ligayan ng Buhay Kung kilala mo si Kristo Listen to a special number.
Good morning to everyone. Uh, we thank God for this uh, time that he has given us to be able to gather, even though not all of us are here, but we thank God for the opportunity to congregate as people of God and to pray for each other. And we thank God also for the opportunity for those people who are watching online. Uh, thank you for watching us and I and we pray that you would continue to share these uh, services that we have so that others would have a chance to uh, listen to God's word. And let's uh, share these uh, messages uh, that we have here, our Sunday school, to other people. Now, some of you may be sharing other people's, uh, other church services, but let's share also, uh, most of all, our our church services. And we are thankful to God for the improvement that we have uh, seen and uh, on our prayers on on Pastor James Montenegro. And when we have re when we receive an update about his condition, uh, make it sure when you receive an update about his condition, make sure that you pray for him. And uh, it is in uh, the prayer request we would be able to hear that from our services as we announce it. And we are thankful most of all for Pastor Boyd that uh, that he is able now to attend our church. I think this is already the seventh time that he is able to attend with us. And we know that God is answering our prayers. One of the most difficult things in, sermon, in sermons is that when you do the introduction of the when you are doing a sermon on the introductory part of the of in epistle but it is very important we believe that every part of the word of god is important there are no extraneous material or there are no unnecessary part of the scripture that uh, we we can we can avoid even the heading in the book of psalms are important and uh, god meant it to be there and the introduction part of the epistle sets the tone um, for the whole book because it tells you the purpose as to why a certain writer uh, has written his book. The, it tells us the purpose of God, the divine author, as well as uh, God's, and how the portion that we are going today, we study today, is already is, is stating the purpose as to why Paul has written his epistle to them. It is a group of people that have never, uh, whom Paul have never met before. But Paul have heard of their faithfulness. And he took time. He made an attempt. And I think that he also made known his attempt to visit the place of Rome. But somehow the Holy Spirit have other plans. And he was, he was, he was diverted to do other things. So while he is uh, preparing, while he is preparing to visit to that place, he has wrote them a wonderful epistle. And I think that uh, this is one of the most, one of the grandest epistles that was ever written because it is telling us about the complete plan of redemption from start to finish. And how that uh, plan of redemption will apply into our daily living. So... This is the reason why Paul has written this. And the portion of the scripture that we are going to read this thing has, has this big idea. Paul's affection for the believers compelled him to thank God for their wholehearted response to the gospel message. He have heard about the, he have heard about the impact of the Roman believers on other people. And he has set out to take time to write them a letter in order that he may encourage them. So let's all stand up as we read the portion that we are going to study today. Uh, let's read beginning in verse 8 and up to verse 16. Uh, follow me with your eyes as I read this. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests, if by any means, now at length that I may have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart 
unto you some spiritual gift to the end you might be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come to you, but was let. The word let is opposite in the meaning to the it means, but I was hindered, hitherto, too, that I may have some fruit among you, among them also, even among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So much as is in me, that is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this portion of the scriptures that tells us the heart of Apostle Paul and to those uh, believers who have shown their, who have demonstrated um, their faithfulness and their faith through their through their wholehearted response to the gospel faith. Help us, O oh God, that we may be able to learn lessons from this so that we may apply it into our daily lives. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may please take your seat. The passage that we have read today is telling us the heart of the Apostle Paul for the Roman Christian who have responded to the gospel message. Now the Roman Christians that we have here was not established by Peter. Peter was not the pastor of the Church of Rome. So it removes any idea that the first pope has been Peter. This has happened during the Pentecost. When the, when the people from other places came to Rome and at that time God has used Peter to share the gospel to them. And because of their response the Spirit moved in their heart, regenerated them. They were saved. They believed in Jesus Christ. And before they would return to their homelands, they were instructed first by, by the Christians there at Jerusalem. That's why it was necessary for them uh, to take up uh, for other believers to sell everything that they have and give it to the apostles for the expense of the instruction of these people who are now going to return to other places and one of them was wrong so that they would uh, they would be able to start a congregation in the place that we have there now the, the spread of the gospel was so much that many of these Jewish and Jewish and, and proselytes who responded to the gospel message have an impact on Rome that other Jewish people took notice, some of them responded, but many of them were against. They were against the believers and they, they conducted a riot against them in so much that uh, Claudius, the Emperor Claudius, expelled all the Jewish people from Rome. Now after Claudius, the Emperor Claudius died, uh, uh, believers are now returning, but at this time, when Paul wrote this epistle, this is composed mainly of Gentile believers. Uh, Gentile believers. So, he wrote this epistle to thank them for the spirit that is so vibrant. It is spoken of throughout the whole world. It made an impact even their enemies. And this is what Paul said in this letter. I thank, in verse 8, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Now he has thanked God for the genuine faith of these Roman Christians. He thanked them. And you and there's a lot of things that you can learn from this people from this verse. First he said, I thank my God. The word my is a revolutionary word. Because even in among Jewish people, People would rarely take God as something that they own Him. And especially among the Gentiles. He said, I thank my God. He thanked God personally. He thanked God intimately. He said, first of all, I want you to know I thank God. 
And this is stating the urgent nature of his personal thanks to God for the progress that he see in other people. But he also say, I thank God through Jesus Christ. You see, our service to God, our prayer, our worship, even our thanksgiving is accepted by God the Father because of what Jesus Christ has done. I thank my God through Jesus Christ. Remember that uh, you cannot you cannot go to Jesus Christ if you you cannot go to God the Father if you bypass the Son. Isn't it that when Jesus uh, taught his disciples to pray, he taught them. He taught them the the prayer that the prayer must be directed to the Father. But in other passages of the Scripture, he also said. The, the other passages are also said that. Our, our prayers are accepted because of what Jesus Christ has done. And he thanked them for their vibrant faith. You see, their faith is living. Their faith is made noticeable to all. Their faith is self-evident that it needs no other proof. It has an impact on those people around them that people took notice of. It is a Faith that is a living faith. Yan po ang buhay na pananampalataya. You see, real faith is not only a knowledge and the mind and to, as to who Jesus is and his claims. As to who God is. Because even the devil believes in God but he, and, and also he also trembles. But he's not saved. It's not only an a knowledge in the mind and also ascend to the truth. But there is also the trust in Him. A commitment of our lives to Him. That was, that's what makes faith a saving faith. It is not only knowledge, it is not only ascent, but this is also trust. A trust that we serve in a changed life. And the changed lives that we can see here is their vibrant faith. And he thanked God for that thing that he had seen in Christian. So how do we apply this truth? Number one is this. That gratitude must be the defining trait of every believer. Now this is not only true for Apostle Paul. You would see that every time uh, he would address the epistle, uh, he would write any epistle and address it to other believers, you would see the element of gratefulness in his letter. Thanking God for the progress that you have seen in the believers. So, uh, thankfulness also must also be the defining trait. Mapagpasalamat ba kayo sa Diyos? Or puro lang kayo give me, give me, give me. Puro lang tayo give me, give me, give me. At pag hindi na nasasagot ang ating panalangin, nagtatampo tayo sa Diyos. I hope that we must thank, that we thank God for everything that happens in our life. Many times, G, uh, Paul would say to the, to his, in his letter, now, thanking, uh, urging them to thank God for everything. In fact, in the, in his letter to the Thessalonians, he said, and everything give thanks. It is God's will that for every believer that he should be grateful. Pasalamat tayo sa Panginoon sa lahat ng mga biyayang natatanggap natin. Pasalamat din tayo sa mga biyayang hindi pa, niyan, hindi pa natin natatanggap. Even for the trials that happens in our way, we must thank God because we know that God has a purpose for those things to happen in our lives because it is for our own good. And also, we must also be alert to thank God for each other's spiritual progress. Pag nagkakita tayo ng paglago sa ibang kristyano na ginagamit natin ang, ang isang tao at nakikita natin ang kanyang paglago, pasalamat tayo sa Panginoon at hindi tayo mainggit. Pag mayroon siyang magandang ministry, pasalamat tayo sa Panginoon at huwag natin isabotahe ang kanyang ministry. What else? We must also examine the authenticity of our faith through the fruit that it bears. Sa bunga ng pananampalatay sa pagbabago, examine natin. Hindi masama na i-examine natin ang ating sarili kung nakikita ba sa atin ang bunga ng Espiritu, bunga ng kaligtasan sa ating buhay. 
Narunapat lamang yun. Many times in the letters of the apostle, he would say, examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Because if not, we might be proven reprobates. It's easy to say that I am a Christian, that I believe in Jesus Christ, and it is not seen in our lives. Many people do that. And many people associated with what we would say fundamental and or evangelical Christianity say that even among some leader, leaders in the church, but such lives is not manifested in the, such change is not manifested in this life. And it would be a very dangerous thing to claim something that you are not. Because one of these days, you may face God and and you would say, and he would say, depart from me, for I know you not, ye workers of iniquity. So examine the authenticity of our faith. Is there any evidences that I am a Christian? If any person would accuse me of being a Christian, would there any would there any evidences to convict me that I am indeed a Christian? So he so his affection for the Christian is manifested by his thanking God for their genuine faith. What else? How did Paul how did how did it manifest that his genuine affection for that his affection for the Roman Christians are genuine? Second, it's this. He prayed unceasingly for them. The moment that he had he became aware of them and he had heard of their spiritual progress. He prayed for them, and this is what he is, uh, what the Word of God says. Romans chapter chapter one chapter one, verse nine and ten. For God is my witness. He thanked God, and why? He said, "For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means." Now at length that I may have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Now, he prayed for them. He prayed for them unceasingly. And remember here that his prayer for them is a prayer in sincerity. Now, how many of you have heard, uh, how many of you have been, have been asked by someone, Sister, brother, please pray for me. Now the question is, pinapipray nyo ba? O, nangangako tayo kung minsan, pero minsan, hindi natin iniisip, nakakalimutan natin. Now, if, if that happened to you, that also happened to me. Nangyari din yan sa akin. And sometimes, naisip ko, na, naisip ko, sino nga yung, sino nga yung naghingi ng prayer request? And, anong ginagawa natin? Lord, kung sino man yung naghingi ng prayer request, answer mo yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang kahilingan. Sometimes we do not really take it to our mind. But here Paul, he said, he's, you would see the pattern of his life, life, lifestyle that he prays for those people. Um, he prays for other believers and in this case he prays for those Christians who are at Rome. He said, God is my witness. So we know his sincerity. God is his witness. He called God to, upon to be his witness. And this, he said, whom I serve in my spirit. He, he served with sincerity. And he served in the gospel of his son. That without ceasing, I make mention of, of you always in my prayers. So he prayed for them in sincerity. But not only that, he put feet to his prayer. Because he was making plans. He was, the content of his prayer is this, that God would give him the opportunity to go to Rome to be able to minister to them. Making requests, if by any means, at length that I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. And in the meantime, he has written them this epistle while he's preparing for that journey so that this uh, congregation at Rome, which was composed mainly of Gentiles, may have an understanding of the truths of the gospel. So how do we apply this? 
Now the application for this is this, that service to God and to others demands sincerity of heart. Kung maglilingkod ka man lang sa Panginoon, maglingkod ka na na may sinseridad. Hindi yung pakitang tao lang. Yan ang ginagawa ng mga Pharisees sa mga scribes. They would serve God so that others would would know. I hope that that would be also your desire. That your attendance to uh, your service to God here in our church is not just for the sake of attendance check. Oh, para makita nila, umatend ako. But with sincerity of heart, you have a purpose to be an encouragement to others and you do that so that you would honor God who is the one whom we are serving in spirit, in sincerity. What else? Our ministry to God must be saturated with unselfish prayer. You must remember this, that even while we are serving God, we are not doing this on our own strength. And this is why we need to pray. Saturate our service to God with prayer. And I know that um, every minister here, here, everyone here in the pulpit who would pray, uh, who would preach, they would pray first that God's blessing will be uh, upon them as they teach and preach. For those who te- are in the teaching ministry and for those who are in the teaching ministry, preaching ministry of our church, uh, let your service to God be saturated with prayer. And even for you who are, who are also serving here as you attend our church, let your lives let your let um, let your listening be saturated with prayer, because our prayer is an indication that we trust God for everything. That we are not depending on our own strength, because if we even try to do, to do a prayerless ministry, sooner or later it's going to fail. Sooner or later it will get the wrong results, and we don't do that. We, not, we don't want to succeed in the wrong thing. Now, it's tragic enough to fail at the right things, but it is even more tragic to succeed at the wrong things. What else? His affection was manifested by, by toiling for their spiritual stability. Ang kanyang goal, hindi lamang sa mga Roman Christians, Kung di sa mga ibang mga Christians na dumating sila sa punto na sila ay maging, maging matatag. That they would be stable um, spiritually. This is what the Word of God says. 11 up to verse 13. For I long to see you. Now, connecting with the previous passage that he is uh, making a request for them. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you might be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that sometimes I purpose to come to you, but I was hindered, or let means hindered, hither too, that I may have some fruits among, uh, among you also, even as among other Gentiles. For I am a debtor, um, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, and both to the wise and to the unwise. So he toiled um, for their spiritual spiritual stability. So what? Why did Paul, what? What are the things that Paul did to ensure the Christians' stability? To the to ensure the Christ, Roman Christians' stability while they are there at Rome. Remember that Rome is the center of the empire. It is a place by which uh, 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 the emperor resides. And it is also a place of greatest evil. All of the all of the all of the immoralities are practiced by the Roman emperors. It was even said that 19 out of 21 Roman emperors are homosexual. So you can just imagine the corruption that is in there, how it is being 
practiced by the Roman leaders and being uh, approved by the by their culture. Most of the people, the, most of the people that are in Rome are slaves. One million of their of those people who are living there are slaves. So you can just imagine the the deprivation and the oppression that most of the population receive from the oppressive regime. And yet this group of people have received the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of them are slaves. Most of them are slaves. And there are also other people that are that have also received Jesus Christ and some of them have also been part of the of the elite uh, Roman armies because of Paul's testimony. They are not one in Christ serving serving God. So they need to be established. This group of believers composed of Jews and Gentile, Greeks and uh, and uh, Greeks and barbarians are now serving together in Rome. In that in that church. So his purpose was to go there to establish them. In verse 11, he said that his goal for them to have some spiritual gifts. So what is the spiritual gift that he's going to give them? Sometimes when the word spiritual gift is mentioned, it is referring to Jesus Christ as the one who is the God's gift to the uh, to, to us, mediated through the Holy Spirit, as he as he the Holy Spirit works repentance in the heart of the people. But also, it is also referring also to the, the spiritual gifts that he is referring, is also referring to the change in conduct, the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's heart. So that they would be strengthened. He is going to teach them some uh, doctrinal truths that, that is for their stability. You see, we are living now in a very difficult times, right? And the only thing that will be able to sustain you through great difficulties are the truths that are found in the scriptures. The doctrines that are here. If ever we would, uh, we would, uh, we would say, hindi natin kailangan nag-doctrine sa panahon ngayon. Gusto natin yung mga bagay na may apply natin diretso sa buhay natin. Remember this, if it is not doctrinal, then it's not practical. Because our practice must be rooted on truths. We cannot turn the Bible into some do-it-yourself something, or we cannot be a preacher here, make ourselves into some form of a motivational speaker. If all of uh, if the speaker here would not teach the doctrinal truths in the scripture, all we, that we are our motivational speakers. And that will not be able to sustain uh, that, the, your, your life. It will only be good for that moment, but nothing else. But when we are grounded in the truth of life, no matter what happens in our life, we are holding on to some truths of the scripture that will never change. So that was the reason why Paul went um, went here at Rome to be able to establish them in the faith. Why he wrote this epistle first before uh, before his visit, so that they would be able to uh, have this uh, to be informed of this truth that they would hold on to, and that this truth would bring uh, would brings uh, change in conduct in their lives that would be noticed by all. But this portion that we are going to study today is that when they would be able to have this change in life and impact on other people, other people would come to see the change that, that happened in them and it would reap a harvest among the people. So he wants to, want to impart to them some spiritual gift that he said in Rome. So because those doctrinal truths are the ones that will establish them in the faith. No other thing. Uh, what else did he say in verse, 12, in verse 12? That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both you and, he, you and me. He say he's doing this to encourage, to mutually encourage the believers. And here you would see the, the humility of Apostle Paul. 
He said, your progress has also been an encouragement to me. And I am going to come to you that I will be uh, an encouragement to you so that you would also be an encouragement to me. Napakahambol niya, nasabi niya na ang pag-share ng blessing ay hindi lang one way na sa iyo lang, kundi kayo rin ay nai-encourage niyo ako. You see, when Christians when Christians uh, are growing in faith, they are an encouragement to the pastor. If you are the more that you are serving God, the more that you bring encouragement to him. And of course, uh, to each other. That is our goal. So, I thank God for those for the ministries in our church for the teaching ministries and for those who are involved in the children's teaching ministry and in the Sunday school and in the preaching ministries for the ones who are teaching here. I thank you for you, you being an encouragement to, to the people and also to me. You are an encouragement to the pastor. This is why We are needing more other people, especially in the children's department, to take part in, in, in that. And I am happy that many that, that there are people who are involved in the children's ministries, but we need more. And for those uh, who are involved, thank God for you. Nagagamit kayo ng Panginoon sa, sa ganitong panahon ng krisis para ma-establish mo ang mga kabataan. Mga parents, in-encourage ko rin kayo na Supportahan ninyo sila. At kung sa, for you that are watching online, pop, uh, ang inyong mga anak, gawin ninyong parte ng kanilang Zoom service. And I, we have, I, sa intermediate, there were, I think, 13 who attended. Makikita ninyo doon sa messenger. Pero kailangan pa yon ng mas marami pa na magiging involved sa children's ministry. And for those who are, and also, most of all, Sunday school. Important ang Sunday school. Nakakatulong yan sa pag-establish sa inyo sa, pananamp sa pananampalataya kasi ang mga nagaganap noon, those things that are happening in the book of Judges are the same things that are happening to us today. And Brother Irvin is doing his best to make, to, to present the truths of the scripture and also to draw application from them. We need that during these hard times. Ganun din sa preaching ministry na nagaganap dito. Because your growth is dependent upon the Word of God. On the Word of God has, as it is proclaimed, explained, and applied from the pulpit and how you would live it out in your daily lives. And also, um, he toiled so that he would be able to reap spiritual harvest. And the word harvest here is referring to the to the Gentiles. Because it is to the Gentiles who would say, because it is clear here that if, in verse 13, that I may reap some fruit also among you, even as among the Gentiles, I am the debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So his goal that these Roman Christians, that they would be more involved in their evangelistic ministry so that their faith would result also in the conversion of other people being saved as they live out their faith. So what are the things that we can draw from this? What application can we do? Uh, draw from this verse? First here, spiritual, spiritual growth is not optional. I, Hindi po optional ang pag-grow, ang pag-mature. Ang ating growth in the, in, pay, in the image of Jesus Christ is not an optional. Hindi lamang yan para sa aming mga teachers, mga preachers dito. It's not only for the leaders in the church. It's for everyone. This is the reason why Paul wrote to them their epistle and decided to come to this place because he wants to see these Roman Christians established in the faith. Spiritual growth is nothing more beca than become more than becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, and it's not optional. So don't ever think 
na ang spiritual growth ay hindi para sa iyo, kundi para lamang yan sa mga ministers dito, dito sa church. What else? Spiritual growth takes time and effort. Or it takes time and sacrifice. Takes time po. Both on those who preach the, uh, the Word of God and teach the Word of God and for those who are listening, you must remember this, that it takes effort. It has to be intentional. But even with our efforts, you have to remember that we are drawing our power from the Holy Spirit who is strengthen us. We have to draw on, kagaya ng sinabi ni Brother Irvin kanina, we have to draw on of the divine resources that God has provided for us. And we have a lot. We have the Father to whom we can pray to. We have Jesus Christ who gave us all those divine resources and it is mediated by the Holy Spirit. And it takes uh, effort and sacrifice. Ano po yan? Spiritual growth is not accidental. It takes intentionality on those who would teach it and those who would apply it. What else? Spiritual growth is a requirement to bear spiritual fruits. Ang yung paglago sa pagiging kristyano, yan ang requirement para magkakaroon kayo ng mga bunga. Magkakaroon tayo ng mga bunga. Spiritual growth is equivalent to mat- spiritual maturity. Parang ano na yun, parang sinonim. At para tayo maging mature, kinakailangan, para tayo magbunga, kinakailangan muna natin maging mature. So, kasi kung ga- susuong tayo, if ever we get involved into the ministry, and we are, have not grown spiritually, we can do a lot of damage. Makita mo sa church na maraming naglilingkod ng mga spiritual immature, mga they behave like brats, they want to have their way, uh, ways, uh, gusto nila na masus- sila lang masusunod. Ano nangyari? Nakakarait siya ng damage. We have to be more like Jesus Christ in His unselfishness. So, service to God requires spiritual maturity in order that we must bring forth spiritual fruit. Because kung hindi po tayo mature, it will just bring carnal fruits. What else? We would see also Paul's de- uh, desire. Um, we would also see Paul's affection for them by his eagerness to, de- to preach the gospel to them. Verse 14. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, what can we learn from this passage? First, um, Answering the question, what is Paul's attitude toward the gospel? Because he decided to preach the gospel to them. You would see here his attitude. And this passage that we have read, read tells us that he has a great sense of obligation to preach the gospel to anyone. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. Now, he is he's using the category of the Roman people of humanity. The, the, the word Greek is used to speak of those people who are at that time speaking the Greek language, Greek culture, and Greek philosophy. They consider themselves to be wise. And those who do not speak Greek are what they call barbarians because to them what they said are bar, 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 bar. Uh, parang hindi maintindihan. So, it is their category of people. He said, no, I am going now to... God has called me to preach not only to a special group of people, to those who are wise, but also to those whom people are considered are unwise. Because those people whom they, who do not have this, uh, who do not adapt the Greek culture, who do not adapt Greek philosophy, uh, sa kanila mga unwise yon. 
Remember that the Greek philosophy, first we have Plato, Aristotle, uh, Socrates, and a host of other philosophers. Uh, this, is, this is one of the contribution of the Greeks to civilization. They considered themselves to be wise for for being uh, for being acquainted with those philosophers. Actually, the word philosophy comes from the Greek word philos, sophos, which means uh, lover of wisdom. So, other people who do not adapt those la those Greek language and philosophy to them, they are called barbarians. So, this is the ultimate put down to be called a barbarians. But Paul said that I have a great sense of obligation to preach the gospel not only to those who would be considered as wise, not only for those people who have adapted the Greek culture, but also for those who are barbarians because we have to remember this. We stand equal at the, at the foot of the cross. Ang distinction po dito ng tao sa anuman ang gamitin ng mga ibang bansa ah, really doesn't matter because every person needs the gospel he has the sense of he has the sense of obligation i am indebted there was a story of a of a person na of a lady who who was and who had was at the counter nagbabayad ng kanyang ano mga binili it, it happened in America. He was paying. He was pay, paying the teller for all the things that he has um, taken, for how he had taken for for uh, for his needs. But he found he he soon found out that that he lacked four dollars. He he overspent so much. So, but the man behind him uh, noticed that he is uh, he he was quite quite that she was quite distressed. Took. Uh, four dollars from his wallet and gave it to the teller to pay for her grocery. He would, he asked, she asked for his name, but he would not give it. So instead, this is what he had done. He wrote a check for the amount of money that the man gave and sent it to the orphanage. He said that because I have received a blessing from this man, I am obliged to give it to others. So, ganun po din tayo. Tayo na nakatanggap ng dakilang biyaya ng kaligtasan sa Diyos. Di ba dapat i-consider din natin na mayroon tayong dakilang utang na loob? Hindi natin mababayaran ang Diyos. But we can have a sense of obligation to give it to those who have not heard the gospel. Ganun po ang attitude ni Apostle Paul. He can never repay God for what he has done, but he can tell others that they might also receive the gift of salvation to others. And what, are, what else? In verse 15, So much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He was ready to preach, to preach the gospel anytime. And this is the kind of attitude that he would say to Timothy. He said, um, My time now is limited. And the time of my departure is at hand. Be instant in season and out of season, or be ready any time. Preach the gospel with all long suffering and doctrine and doctrinal instruction. He is ready to preach at any time. But of course, his readiness was backed up by his preparation that he has that was that he has done. He has he is Ready to preach the gospel anytime and anyone. What else? This is the thought of the passage. He is not ashamed of the gospel. Hindi niya ikinahiya ang ebanghelyo. Kanyang po ang dapat na attitude natin bilang individual that we will not be ashamed of the gospel. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Anong dapat natin ikahiya sa ebanghelyo? For it is the power of God and salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Rome boasts of their military power. The Greeks boast of their intellectual prowess. The Hebrew people boast of their traditions. 
But Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believe it. Now this is very this is very revolutionary because the Jewish people thought that they are the only one who deserve to be saved. Some of them accept that mentality. To everyone who believes. So, believers, we must not yield to the pressure today to take away the offense of the gospel. Many people today said that you have to modify your message according to the time setting that we have now. There was a book that is known as Postmodern Christianity, and this is what he said. So that the church would be relevant in our modern age, we have to tone down the offensive words that Christians, that pastors or Christian preach. For example, sin, um, judgment, and hell. Dapat alisin na daw natin yan because it is so offensive. But if we are going to take away those, we are going also to take the power of the gospel. The reason why we need to be saved, why the gospel is of good news, because of the bad news. We are sinners before God. And as sinners, we, de we are deserving to be punished eternally in hell. Because that is God's just penalty for our sin. Because God is a righteous God, He needs that sin to be punished. That is the bad news. And the Bible says that for all have sinned and have fallen short of the kingdom of God. And for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God's free grace of salvation is available through Jesus Christ. How was this possible? Romans 5 8 says, But God commended or demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loved the world so much that so much that he sent his only begotten son in the person of Jesus Christ who took on human form to be the sacrifice for our sin. To be born of the seed of David. To be born like us. In every respect, except, except of course for sin. And because he is the only God man, he is able to save us. He is the qualified sin bearer. Him who has taken on humanity is able to die for our sin. He who is God is able to bear God's full wrath upon sin. And to be able to triumph over it. And because God the Father accepted the sacrifice of His Son, the perfect sacrifice of Christ of His Son, God the Father is free to declare righteous those who would put their faith in trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. If we would take away the offense of the gospel, then that only shows that we are ashamed of it. And there are many pressures today that the world would like us to, uh, to yield to. There is a many philosophies of ministries that say, wag ka nang magdala ng Bible, wag ka pag ikaw ay magpipreach, kasi nakaka-intimidate nakaka yan sa mga unsaved. Heard that philosophy? Have seen that? Maraming mga churches, even mga Baptist churches, na ganun ang kanilang philosophy. So, the pastor would preach in the pulpit, dress in, in so informal as if he's going to the beach, and would just give some pip talk that has some religious words uh, uh, put into it and call it preaching. I actually di naman nila talaga tinatawag na preaching. He is life coaching. And that is, if that would be the way that people would preach, it has no authority kasi wala walang salita ng Panginoon na makakapagligtas. We must, not be, we must not be afraid to take the offense of the gospel. The gospel will always be offensive to people because it shows them that they are sinners. Because it identifies sin. And it, only, it shows that there is only one way. Not many ways. 
And this is now the temptation today to be ashamed of the gospel to say that there are other ways to salvation. No. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except but through me. So how do we apply this passage? First, we must have a deep sense of obligation to everyone. To bring the gospel to everyone. Napaka-obvious sa passage natin. Wala tayong itatangi ng mga tao. And I would like to appreciate the church for your faithful giving to faith promise because that is how it is manifested that you have the deep sense of obligation to take the gospel to everyone, not only here in the Philippines, but to every nation of the world. What else? We must prepare ourselves to the task of sharing the gospel to everyone. Tayo mismo, ihanda natin ang ating sarili na maging, maging equip tayo para ito ay maganap. At ibagaganap ito primarily sa teaching and, minist- and preaching ministry ng ating church. Your presence will be one of the ways by which you would be able to be equipped. May, may, may equip ang isang tao pag hindi umati ng church. What else? We must remember that the only distinction that matters among people are anong sabi doon? Those who believe and those who don't believe. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believe. So may dalawang distinction po ng tao na that truly matter. Those who believe and those who do not believe. So that we must have the concern to bring the gospel to others, to those who do not believe. Somebody said that the first sign of true regeneration is a concern for others. Isa daw marka ng tunay na taong save, ang, ang pagkakaroon siya ng pagka, pagkaawa sa mga hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon. Huwag natin isarili ang, ang gospel ng Panginoon. So, overall application, ito pong matat- matututunan natin sa talatang ito. Number one, real faith will manifest itself through vibrant and persevering faith. Ang tunay na pananampalataya, kasi pwede din mangyari na magkaroon ng hud, uh, huwad na pananampalataya. Real faith will manifest itself through our vibrant and persevering faith. Makikita ito sa, atin, sa vibrancy ng ating paniniwala at sa ating perseverance. Ang pagpapatuloy. Ito ang ebidensya na tunay nga tayong ligtas. What else? We must continually pray for each other's spiritual progress. Magpanalingan na tayo sa isa't isa. Kailangan natin yan. Paul himself was a model of, of that. Ipag-pray natin ang spiritual progress. Okay, nakikita natin na, ano, na ang mga request na ipanalangin mong ganito, Panalangin mo yung ganyan, itong sakit ng ganito, yung uh, kanyang uh, family problem. Yes, we pray for that. But most of all, let's pray for each other spiritual progress. What else? We must do our part for each other spiritual progress. Not only pray, but we must also do our part in our spiritual progress. Sa for us who are in the frontliners here in the ministry, with the pastor and with the teachers, uh, it is our goal to be a part of your spiritual progress through making sure that what we are teaching to you is what the scripture reflects. Now, masasabing, Brother Dennis, umaaten lang kami. You know what? Meron din kayong party. Just your being present here by bringing people to our church is an indication that you are supportive of each other's progress. Because kung dyan dito kayo, nakaka-encourage kayo sa mga tao. What else? And I would like to talk to the men of the church, sa mga kalalakihan dito ng ating simbahan. As a father, it is your obligation to bring your children it, to the church. Na kung sila ay nasa age na na inaalaw tayo. But make sure that your 
if ever na maiiwan mo sila, na mayroon silang maiwan ng instruction doon sa bahay. By your example, may papakita mo ang faithful ninyo ang faithfulness. By your leadership in the family at sa mga officers ng mga church, I would like to talk, to encourage you. I am happy for those na ano na nandito sa mga nandito ngayon because your presence here is serving as an example for other members to see. Example po kayo. May hindi po tayo, may kung halimbawa kami man ay, tayo man ay pastors at officers, hindi natin isipin na ang ating posisyon ay ano, ay exemption from service. It's not that. We are examples. What else? We must place great priority on the gospel proclamation on our churches. Yan po. Prioritize natin ang gospel proclamation. Wala tayong ibang substitute. Huwag sanang dumating sa time na iiwasan natin ang preaching of the Word of God at magkakaroon tayo ng iba-ibang mga, mga pakulo in place of the gospel. There is no substitute for the gospel. There is no substitute for preaching because that is God's ordained mean, means by which it would bring salvation to those who would hear and to bring spiritual growth for the believers. Lastly, we must not be ashamed of the gospel. Huwag natin itong ikahiya. It is the power of God to salvation, unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to Greek. Shall we all stand up? We have seen Paul's affection for the Roman Christians that they would uh, for their spiritual growth and he thought that for every effort that they would be established in the faith and to have uh, spiritual growth, uh, fruits, harvest among the Gentiles. But it can only happen first if we must have a firm grasp of the gospel. A while ago I have explained the gospel that it is none other than God sending His own Son into the world to die on the cross for our sin to be our Savior. And our response to Him must be our repentance and faith. Na kinakailangan natin magsisi sa ating mga kasalanan. Let's pray for, for that God will move in our hearts. Heavenly Father, as we continue this invitation, I pray, Lord, that you would walk work in the hearts of everyone here so that we would see how important your gospel is. It is our only hope and there is none other. It is also the source of our spiritual growth and it is also the source of the stability of our church. Help us, O oh God, to see that this is very important and there is no other way by which uh, all of your goals in our lives would be accomplished. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Brother Irving leads us in a song, Is there anyone here who has not yet received Jesus Christ as Savior? Hindi pa kayo ligtas. Tanging ang Ibanghelyo ng Panginoon, ang magandang balita, ang makakaligtas sa iyo sa inyong mga kasalanan. Wala nang ibang paraan. And even with us, believers, the gospel is our, the source of our confidence, the source of our hope. We never out, outgrow our need of the gospel. We need the gospel every day. We need to remind ourselves of the gospel every day. Is there anyone today? challenge for us today is not to be ashamed of the gospel. Let us not be ashamed. It is God's power to salvation. We must rejoice. We must take root.
also, let's pray for everyone else. Let's pray for each other. Because our stability is based on God and on God alone. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We have seen the heart of Apostle Paul and his affection for the Christians. And I pray, oh God, that we would also have that desire. Put that heart, put that desire, O oh Lord, in our heart through your Holy Spirit. So that we would be able to appreciate the gospel. And to see the need of the people who have not yet received their Savior. And it is our, also our source of confidence and our source of strength. Help us, O oh God, that we would always remember to remind ourselves with the gospel every day. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you may be seated a minute. That's fine. You know, it's good that we can be concerned about our fellow Christians. Uh, during this pandemic and everything so much different than it used to be. Uh, I don't like not being able to shake your hand after church and talk to you a minute. Uh, I, I, I miss that. But uh, I cannot do it any, now the way the things are. And so we need to pray for each other when at home. Think about somebody. Just pray it. Ask God to bless them. Be with them. Help them whatever situation they might be in right now. That would be a good thing that we could do. We do have uh, James Montenegro. Uh, last I heard, he was still in ICU, getting a little bit off of uh, oxygen. And uh, so let's keep praying for him. And then I got a, a message from Rose about Brother Mike that uh, his cancer that he has is very aggressive. And so they got to change the, the method of trying to get rid of his cancer. And so let's just pray, pray especially for both of those guys. And it would be a miracle if both of them can come through this and be fine. And we have a God of miracles. We need to trust God that he can do that. And... Uh, just be faithful, pray for our church, pray pray for each other, uh, pray for our offerings, pray for our missionaries on the foreign field. They're all in the same situation as we are here. And it's kind of amazing the whole world has the same problem with all the virus. And uh, so uh, God knows we've got to trust Him. So you just determine I'm going to still love God I'm going to be in church. I'm going to do the will of God in my life and reach out, reach out to some other people. A lot of people are hurting. Uh, and there's a lot of suicides, a lot of, a lot of things happening that's terrible uh, in our homes because of that. And so some people need a friend. And you need to be a friend to a neighbor. You don't know what all goes on in a house by there. So it's a good time when we could be a witness and a testimony to other people about how we react to whole situations today. So uh, I'm just glad we can come to church. I'm, I'm glad that we can see each other a little bit and encourage each other every Sunday. And so I, I appreciate you coming. And I hope it will help, help us all to be stronger people. Well, let's have the ushers come. We'll receive our uh, offering. Whatever God has blessed you with, you give, give what belongs to Him, and then He'll bless you for that. Okay? Father, thank you for everybody that's in church today. They made the effort to come. And it, sometimes it's difficult, but thank you for them for coming. Now, Lord, as we try to worship and honor you with how you have blessed us with our work and with our offering and tithe and especially for our missionaries. They, we need to uh, encourage people to give to missions because those missionaries need our help. There's no way they can get any other help except from the churches. So help us to be a church that's faithful to all of our efforts that we have. 
bless us uh, with uh, good things. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Are you glad you came to church? Amen. You just feel better whenever you come to church and see other people. Huh? All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed. <coughs> Father, again, we rejoice for being in your house. Thank you for our church and our people that are coming. Lord, I pray for those that are unable to come uh, because they're too old or too young, whatever problem they got. But Lord, just bless them. Let them know that we care for them and uh, about them and for them. So Lord, I ask you to just give us a good week this week. Protect every one of us from the virus that we have. And Lord, you just, just let people know that you're a God that hears and understands and cares about each individual of us. Lord, we rejoice that we can be in church. Rejoice that we're a Christian. Lord, take care of us. Dismiss us with thy blessing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I guess, do I need to dismiss you? Huh? Is that what you do? Okay, let's let this section go uh, out over here. You, you're free.